What up YouTube, Mr. Mac here and welcome back to episode 7 of our Lynx FC Road to Glory series. This is The Chain Wreck and this is Football Manager 2020. Now, we are back after the heroics of the last episode where we made our European debuts uh, and our Europa League debut and came away with back-to-back -back wins and a 5-2 aggregate win over Kukesi, and we are here ready to go against Varda J. Now, the reason that I've brought you back here, though, is this. Ryan Delaney has just completed a $110,000 move from Bolton to Lincoln Red Imps. Our lead contender and our lead probably challenger for the title has just signed a player worth $110,000 and they're paying him $2,000 a week. This is absurd. I don't know how I'm supposed to compete with this, how I'm supposed to back this up. My transfer budget is $9,000 for the season. Now, I saw this and then I thought, well, let's have a look at Lincoln Red Imps and see how they go because, you know, they, they struggled a little bit at the end of last season and you can see their estimated value here is $3.7 million, just, uh, you know, as a comparison, we're at $1.56 million. So I had a look at their schedule and I found that they've actually been doing quite well in the Europa League as well. Uh, they had a 9-1 aggregate win and then a 6-2 aggregate win. And they are also playing uh, in the best placed third qualifying round here as well. So some really, really good stuff for Gibraltar's club coefficients uh, happening here. Of course, we're just going to confirm our squad. There was one small downside to last episode, and that was that Valdivia... He's going to be out for probably two months now. Um, and we're here ready to go up against it. Uh, ready for this Vada Scott J clash. Now, you would have just seen the odds there $4. So we're certainly not favorites, but we are not well and truly out of this. It is going to be a challenge for us. We are at home, though. And we have played a lot better at home in the Europa League and in the Champions League as well. So we're going to get right into it here. Now we're playing that 4-4-1-1 because we don't have our second striker here. So we've got Clinton, De Los Santos, Avellano making sort of a midfield triangle there. Um, Parity on the right has been playing exceptionally well recently. Um, yeah, look, the least I expect is a result that gets us a good chance in the second leg. And, and I have faith in all of you guys to go out there and get it done. So where uh, my team picked itself, it is a strong team, but you know we know what we're capable of. And we're here now, uh, ready to go with our kickoff. And two and a half minutes in, we get our first save, which is fantastic. Bradley Banda doing work there. Power obviously back from suspension and now parity with the ball and on a storming run down the wing to Morgan, Kelvin Morgan, three minutes into the game with an absolute screamer for his sixth goal of the season. We've only played five and he has done it again for Lynx FC. This man built him a statue already. That looked like it might have caught the heel of the Vada Skopje defense. Regardless, and Lincoln are one nil down there as well. So we can sort of keep a bit of an eye on their games as we, um, as we go through. We'll keep an eye on over, uh, over there with that too as they, uh, they go through. We're one nil up now and we have another chance here with De Los Santos clean through and Sean De Los Santos slots the second goal of the game for Lynx FC. We're now two goals to the good. And we have turned 
Victoria Stadium into something of a fortress here in our European games. Often we are facing teams that have come with over 2,000 kilometers of travel, and that's not ideal. Jamie Sarah with a handball giving up a penalty. We would love Bradley Bunder to save this. He goes the right way, but he doesn't get the save. Miroslav Ivanovsky with the goal, and it's 2-1. And that has really taken the wind out of the home crowd here. Let's demand more. Jamie, Sarah, I do expect much more from you, my friend. And he's back in the action again. Oh, Morgan with another good header. We can't do too much with that. We do turn it over here and get the ball back. Vinay with a huge bomb up the field. Morgan's going to run onto it. Gets it in the corner, De Los Santos, and there it is. We've restored that two-goal buffer. The two superstar signings of the season, Kelvin Morgan and Sean De Los Santos, combining there with a beautiful piece of play. And you see De Los Santos with a big run into the box. Open header. He makes no mistake. And we are 3-1 up. Very early on here. Haven't seen Lincoln Red Imps uh, pop up again yet in the in the ticker along the side there uh, for their game. 38 minutes gone now. Vinay with the ball. Playing it back to Gonzalez. Inside to Jolly, the captain. To Bender. Up now, Morgan with another header. This man's heading has been supreme. Tyrone Avellano. Goes close. Cannot hit the target, unfortunately. We're coming up to half time now. And I've got to say, despite everything, really good first half. 12 shots to five, six shots on target to two, 46% possession. But we're, we're okay with that. We've got three goals. The only goal we've given up is a penalty. So they haven't scored on us in open play. Let's see if we can find. Leicester, Leicester City are playing in this competition right now, in this same, wow, that is incredible. Um, what happens if I star that? I want to follow this match because I do want to get updates if Lincoln Red Imps can pull through. Um, it's going to be really good for Gibraltar football. Gibraltarian, Gibraltar, I don't know, one of those two. Look, let's not get complacent here, boys. We know that things can turn around quickly. Um, midfielders, look, there's a lot more to come, and I believe you've got what it takes. That turns everyone's mood around. Fantastic. We are back out here now. I want to see some more from you, boys. Give me another goal. Make me, make me proud to be your manager. Maybe I said the wrong thing. Oh, boy. Oh, what a save by Bander. Gets just enough on it to send it past the post and preserves the two-goal lead. And again, another brilliant save from the, from the Lynx FC keeper. Okay, 2,147, so not a sellout today. Um, let's see. I want to bring Niall Sarah in because I did that last time and we conceded two goals. So I'm not really a super big fan of that. Um, Ethan Jolly not having the best game, but none of these guys are on cards yet. I think we're going to put Mark Bailey in again at Poacher because that just seems to be where he goes. We'll give him 20 minutes. We'll see if we can get anything out of him. We're going to go to Cautious here. Possibly an interesting move, but I think it's probably the right decision. 10 minutes to go now. We're going to slot back to defensive. Um, we just want to preserve, really, the lead that we've got. Jolly to De Los Santos. Chips it into Mark Bailey, the 16-year-old, and he scores. It's his second ever game. His first senior goal for Lynx FC. He hasn't even scored for the reserves yet. And the 16-year-old... Salot's one home, cool as you like. 
Incredible, what an angle. Just plays it on the near post. And that could be a crucial goal in this tie. We are 4-1 up. I don't think Lincoln got anything out of their game, um, their home leg. Mark Bailey scored his first career goal. Look at this lad, 14 finishing. And I think that's what it comes down to. He's not super consistent. His potential ability is absolutely rubbish. But he scored us a goal here with his 14 finishing. Um, I better just make sure that he's in the senior squad. So he's getting trained like a senior squad player. We're paying him $50 per week. <laughs> absolutely blowing my mind right now. Let's head to the dressing room. Boys passionately they'd written us off we've won 4 one the home ground advantage has done its work for us we're we're in a very good place lincoln red Imps losing one nil to rejeka but that's okay they've got an opportunity to come back delos santos superb my friend what a signing you've turned out to be come in you've played Three Europa League games for us, scored three goals and one assist. That's the Europe. You hear yeah. Can't even talk properly right now. The UEFA European Championship. So that was before he came to the club. Um, an absolute dream come true. I'm not sure why they're not being recorded as um, part of his. Oh, because it's the National League that we're recording here, uh, which is fine. I tell you what, though, he's, uh, he's made some good stuff. Grabbed him on a trial. He's, he's done wonderful things for us already. 11 first touch, 10 passing, 13 tackling. This is a man that we want to be able to keep here at the club for a number of years. So, look, we were excellent. We deserved the win. Bailey netted his first goal after coming through the club's academy. Uh, it's a great moment. Um, we put great emphasis on youth development. He, uh, we can't get carried away. He's got a lot going for him, but yeah, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. He's got two star potential, remember. Sean De Los Santos lifted the rest of the team. This is no time to get complacent. He's now the youngest ever goal scorer. Um, well, look, he's a good player. He can go far if guided sensibly. Let's not get too carried away. Young Mr. Bailey. He's played two games in the Europa League for us. At 16, he's become the youngest goal scorer for Lynx FC. 16 years and 246 days. Um, astounding. We have had some astounding moments so far in Europe. And it's, it's been an absolute roller coaster, really. Where, look performing beyond any expectations that I had. What I really want to make sure that we do now, though, is capitalize on this opportunity that we've got because it is quite the opportunity. Uh, you know, three goal advantage heading into an away leg in Europe, um, Europa League, like this is the point where we could potentially stake our claim in the group stage. And that for our finances would be huge. Absolutely, like it's, it's millions of dollars for the group stage. We've made a million dollars in the last episode. We're probably gonna put a few more dollars in the bank in this episode, thanks to the performance uh, that we've had. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because we're going to have a pretty challenging game or a two-legged tie coming up. He's not interested in us. Why does it matter? Um, they don't want to sell him. He's not interested in us. That's, that's fine. Great. Um, and we still haven't, we haven't even kicked off the league season yet. Transfer budget, 10K. There you go. Like, the board is not really expecting much of us at all. <laughs> and we are just tearing it up. Okay, got some good homegrown players. 
two to four weeks. That's looking better than first expected, really. So hopefully Valdivia can continue to, to mend up for us. Bailey needs to focus better. So I'm going to say, look, I'm going to criticize his training. I'm going to say I'm disappointed. And I'm going to say, look, you've got so much potential. I want to see you work harder. Mate, I guess you're not convinced. That's a shame. I'm going to obviously disappoint the lad after his first ever goal for the club. But the, the reports don't lie. Elvin Morgan needs better challenges. No, he does not. Malcolm Harding. Who is he and what is he doing? He has come along quite well, but he's not getting anything from the coaches. He can stay. He can stay there. He can stay in the under 23s. That's fine. Right. Let's attend this press conference and we're going to tell them the players will take. They're going to work just as hard. Training has been excellent. We're confident of securing a result. We are going halfway around the world for this game against Varda Skopje, and we're going to win. The more, I, the more I think about it, the more I actually believe it. We are here to win. Gustav Morgensen, 19-year-old Danish striker on loan from Brentford. I don't know how we managed to scout this guy. He's playing for Southford. I wonder what they'd be interested in. Okay, $425,000. I mean, it'd be nice. It'd be real nice. He's very versatile. Definitely someone for the future. Um, 19 years old. I don't know why I've got two of those, but anyway. Um... He's tired. Good. Uh, probably because I missed something. Anyway, that can stay like that for now. Wants to win a trophy and is excited at the team's chances in the AFL League 2. Yeah, well, I mean, you could win trophies with me, mate. Uh, when does his contract expire? First of the first 2021. Oh, that's soon. Although I think that's... Hmm... Yeah, that's his contract there. The loan expires on the 1st of the 1st, 2021. Well, let's add him to our shortlist, and we may come back to him a little bit later on. John Paul Duarte. We can scout him. We don't want another midfielder. Galliano, 14 to 19. Have a look at him. He's only 21. Could come in very handy for us. Galatasaray, wow. Okay, here we go. We're up against it, apparently. We won 4-1 in the first clash, and we're up against it now. That's, uh, that's going to be our under-21 squad there, I think. So that'll be fine. And now, here we go. In the purple kit for the first time, the odds for them are worse, and the odds for us are worse, at $5.00. Really, the important thing for us here is that we go from positive to defensive, I think, and we just want to sit back a little bit. We just, we really want to make sure that we've got what it takes here, that we can hold them out. That's, that's all it's going to take for us, really. Let's uh, definitely, let's pick up where we left off. Yeah, because if we can score another four goals today, uh, we'll be high on confidence coming into the start of our league game. Sean De Los Santos has been pulling all the strings in midfield. Yep. We certainly hope he can keep that form going. Jamie Serra. Um, yeah. Yep. He's doing great. Here we go. 3-4-1. One. 4-1 one on aggregate. And we have the first highlight, Jamie Serra to parity, back to Serra, inside to power. A big lofted ball across to Vinay, who threads the needle there and gets it to Kelvin Morgan, who hits a bullet of a shot. But it doesn't pay off. Parity gets it back. Oh, Jaden Parity is offside. Oh, 
I was just about ready to celebrate a minute and a half in and I thought my dreams had come true. Nevertheless, five minutes in, another highlight. This one, Anton Antonisovsky plays it up, but we turn it over and now we go forwards through Clinton and Parity. Cut it inside, back to Clinton there, and Clinton lost it over to Kelvin Morgan. And this is the kind of situation he loves. But he got it onto his left foot and he just messed it up a little bit. That's okay. It's okay. We've got a three goal advantage. Alevsky. Vinay gets up for the header. Now remember, these guys haven't scored against us. I thought that went in. I haven't scored against us in open play. So I'm hopeful that we can stop them from scoring three. If they score three, they win because they've got that away goal. If we score one, they have to score five to beat us. And I don't think that's going to happen. So really what I'm looking for here, as power sends a hopeful ball forwards, we go to Avalano, the long range assist specialist, and he just slides it through to Vinay. Clinton. Parody, this time he can't be offside. This time he scores. And Lynx FC looks certain to go through to the fourth qualifying round of the Europa League with that delightful piece of play there. Clinton heading it down to Parody and Jaden Parody stepping up again in a big game where it counts. And we're now 1 0 up on the day. 5-1 up on aggregate. And we play the ball forwards again here. Avalano to Vinay getting more involved this time. Looked like he got cut straight through the back of him. But we end up with the ball again. And it's back at the feet of Parity, who plays to Sarah, who plays forwards again. But Parity can't get a hold of that one. And Scott J come at us here on the break. Todorov. Playing inside to Red Zeppi, playing across to Mitrev now. And Mitrev uh, gets it inside the box, plays across to Todorov, and Todorov clatters, Todorov clatters one off the bar. Can't get the job done. And that was almost a goal in Europe for Brad Power, the vice captain. Not to be. Goalkeeper plays it out quickly. Ivanovsky. Cannot put it past Bradley Banda at the near post. And we're 33 minutes gone now. It's time to demand some more as we close in on half time. With a 5 1 aggregate lead, we'd love another goal for us <laughs> before half time. But right now, it's Skopje, Vada Skopje with the ball. Play to Mitrev, Mitrev with the cross in. And again, Todorov hits the crossbar. I tell you what, we are in front, but we certainly have not been the better team. I wonder how Lincoln are doing. Um, who are they playing against? They started with R, so they're going to be down here. Rejecca, Lincoln have scored. Uh, Kike put them in front just, in, just before half time. So it's now one all and one all on away goals. So they, they could have something from this as well. Let's make sure we don't get complacent here, boys. There's a lot more to come defensively, and there's a lot more to come in the midfield. Unfortunately, Jaden Parody's lost confidence, even though I've said that I've got faith in him. We just really need to make sure we finish this off because they've had a few too many chances, really, um, and we probably haven't had quite enough yet. You know, we looked good early on in the game, and we're still looking fairly good now. A few guys starting to get complacent. So I'm going to say, look, show some passion. Like, mm, that may not have worked as well as I'd hoped. What we're going to do now, though, we're going to make some subs. <laughs> Unfortunately, our big name players really haven't done it for us today. Let's see if the 16-year-old can do something a little bit nicer in there. <sighs> Brad Powers had such a great game. I'm going to stick with him at 67%. I don't really think I have much of a choice otherwise. Um, Parity, Clinton playing really well in the middle of the park. 
will let them keep doing their thing. They're all, they've all lost interest in the game. Um, here we go. Parody, De Los Santos, Vinay, back to Parody. The cross is blocked. Gonzalez is going to play a terrible ball behind him. And Ivanovsky on the run, one on O, cannot put, put it away one on one with the keeper there. We got away with that one. You know, 80, 82 minutes gone. Let's demand some more here. 90 minutes into injury time, and that's it. We go through to the fourth qualifying round of the Europa League. Astounding. Not only do we go through, but Lincoln Redims go through as well with a 2-0 win over Rijeka. And there are two Gibraltar teams on the verge of the Europa League. One season in. This is absolutely absurd. And I am speechless. Absolutely speechless. This is unbelievable. We're through to the champion's fourth qualifying round after a 5-1 aggregate win over Varda Skopje. We've got another $450,000 and the board are very pleased. That's really nice. Now we're going to play FC Basel. And I think this is probably where our run comes to an end because as you can see, they are a three and a half star reputation team. We are not a three and a half star reputation team. Um, we are a half star reputation team. Now that may change after this season because you know our finances are secure now. We've we've absolutely smashed it in the Europa League. We are one of the favoured personnel along with Valdivia. Um, we've had a great run. I don't know if we can go much more than that. Let's look at who Lincoln Red Imps have in their game. They play CSKA Moscow. Another three and a half star team. So I think we may have reached the limits uh, of what we can achieve in the Europa League this time around. Uh, Jaden, you were superb. They've rearranged this match again because we're playing Basel. Um, either side of the Glasses United game. Now we're, we're getting some fixture congestion happening very, very quickly. Um, but at least we're going to be match fit. So, yeah, look, we're going to leave it there. We will come back for the game against Basel, the away game. Um, and then possibly the home game as well, depending on how it goes. So, yeah, look, that's, that's going to be where we will see you next. This, is, this has been unbelievable. I'm so pumped for the boys, uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Uh, until next time, I will speak to you soon.